Hi, this is an example problem from chapter 26 on refraction and total internal reflection. Pause for a moment to read the question. All right, so this is a refraction type problem and a total internal reflection is related to, to uh, this phenomenon. So our uh, basic equation whenever we use this is Snell's law of refraction and that is uh, n1 times sine of theta1 is equal to n2 times sine of theta2. And so the 1 and the 2 correspond to the psi, to the materials, right? So glass here is uh, one material and air is another material. Now the, the beam of light is originating in the glass, so it's in the glass first, and then it's going to strike the interface right here. Here's your interface between the air and the glass. And the beam, if it passes from the uh, glass through the interface to the air, then we say that that is the refracted beam. The uh, initial beam, this is what we call the incident beam. And so for Snell's law of refraction, we're going to identify that side 1 is the glass. So this is our 1, and side 2 is the air in the equation. Now, uh, notice that for the glass, we have index of refraction that is uh, shown here, and it's slightly different for red light and for violet light. But the n value is greater for glass. That means that light goes slower in the glass, for one thing. Uh, and in the air, air is essentially the same value n as when we have a vacuum. And so for air, n, we just say it's 1. It's like 1.00029 or something. Now, if we look at Snell's law, we can see what's going to happen here. So in this case, uh, the glass side, 1, it has a larger n value. The air side has a lower n value. And these two sides of the equation need to be equal. So if we compare the angle, sine of theta is an increasing function. Therefore, uh, if you have a higher n1, you have to have a low, smaller angle on the glass side. And uh, you have a larger angle on the air side. So just to think about this for a second, uh, let's uh, take the uh, red color, for example. So for both of the colors, since they're mixed initially, this is your theta 1. And notice that we always measure that with the normal line. So the angle that we uh, write for Snell's law, it's always measured from the ray to the normal line. So that's important to remember. Don't use this one right here. Now, we know that uh, as it goes from glass to air, it's going from a lower index to a higher index of refraction, and it's going to increase the angle. That means it's going to bend away from the normal. So if we think of the, uh, the light ray here with the red, for example, maybe it goes like that. And if we look at the angle, measure that to the normal again, that's your theta 2. So let's go ahead and try this for the, uh, the red light first. So in this case, we're going to be trying to figure out theta 2. So let me reverse the equation. We've got n2 sine theta 2 is equal to n1 sine theta 1. And we're solving for theta 2. So let's divide both sides by n2. We're going to end up with sine theta 2 is equal to n1 sine theta 1 divided by n2. So theta 2 is equal to sine inverse of the whole quantity n1 sine theta 1 divided by n2. And now we can go ahead and just put in our numbers and calculate theta 2. So recall that uh, the 1 is glass, the 2 is air, so we're going to put in N1 for glass for the red. It's going to be 1.520 multiplied by sine of theta 1. That's the incident angle, 40.85 degrees, and we're going to divide that all by N2. That's air. That's just 1. Be sure to uh, have your calculator in degree mode and use the inverse sine function and we get an angle of 83.8 degrees. Now which angle is that again? Right, That's this one right here. 
83.8 degrees measured from the normal line to the uh, refracted ray. Again, this is our incident ray. All right, let's look at this for uh, violet. So before I go to violet, let me again go back to, to the, the red. So notice that this red-violet incident ray, we've got a refracted ray. We always also have a um, reflected ray as well. So some percentage of the light is also reflected, and it obeys the uh, law of reflection here. So for red here, this is our reflected ray. Um, and so the light essentially splits at the interface, part of it reflected, part of it refracted. Let's calculate for violet now. So for violet, we're going to have the same formula again because it's the same scenario. So we're going to use this. And this time we're going to need to go ahead and just put in our values, see what we get. Sign inverse. Now for violet, the only thing that changes is the index of refraction. It's slightly dependent on color. It's larger for the uh, shorter wavelength light. So violet 1.538. And that's going to be the same incident angle. Theta 1 is 40.85 degrees. And again, we're going to divide that by N2. That's just 1, the index of refraction for air. Now, when I put that into my calculator, I got this. I got undefined. And uh, well, what that means is that this uh, function here is not defined. We've gone beyond 90 degrees, in other words. If this happens, this means that we have total internal reflection. And so what's happening here is if we look at the violet uh, ray, right? We know that we're going, uh, we, we start with your incident ray here, right? We know that we're going, um, not we're, we're not going to go straight, we're going to refract, and so we're going to go from uh, higher to lower end, we're going to bend away. This calculation told us it was going to bend beyond 90 degrees. When that happens, you don't get a ray like this. Nothing actually goes to the other side. It all gets reflected back, and it obeys the law of reflection. So it's going to all come back in this direction for the, for the violet. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the critical angle. That's the angle, the incident angle, for which all of the light becomes reflected with total internal reflection. So in this case, the idea here, we again can use Snell's law. So let's go ahead and copy Snell's law. And what we're going to do this, this time, we're going to make a few changes. So we are now going to look for what theta 1 is going to be. And we're going to allow this to be theta critical. That's the critical angle. And uh, that's the case when theta 2 on the other side is exactly 90. That means that the light doesn't pass through. And uh, we're going to solve for theta, theta C critical. And any angle that's larger than that is going to have complete reflection, no transmission. So to, si to solve for this, we'll just do a little bit of algebra. Sine theta C. Remember, sine 90 is equal to 1, right? So we're going to have uh, sine theta c is equal to simply n2 divided by n1. And to solve for the critical angle, all we need to do is take the inverse sine function of the ratio of those two indices of refraction. So to do that, we're going to have theta c is equal to sine inverse uh, n2, remember that that is air, that's 1, and n1, 
that is going to be for the violet, which is uh, 1.538. And that gives us a critical angle for violet of 40.6 degrees. So there's our critical angle for violet and uh, our angle of reflection for red uh, in the previous one. So notice that uh, because the angle here, it was 40.85, it exceeds a critical angle, all of the violet light is reflected. If we do the same calculation for the red light, let's see what we get here real quick. So for the red light to do the uh, critical angle, it's going to be air, the second side, divided by index of refraction for red. That comes to 41.1 degrees. And so uh, 40.85 isn't quite to the critical angle yet for the red. Therefore, some of the red is passing through. I just want to make one quick change here. So I had used uh, two different colors on these uh, arrows here. And uh, that was a little bit unfortunate because I didn't mean to uh, equate these colors with the two colors of light here. Um, I just wanted to show the functionality of Snell's law, how it works. And so, right, if n is greater on one side, the angle has to be smaller and vice versa.